Okay, hello. We are here for Saturday Family Library. I don't know, when I've re-listened to some of these recordings, it does sound like, I don't know, like it's in a tunnel or something, but I don't know how it sounds without the headphones. So um, I suppose I could, you know what, I'll record today's without the headphones and then we'll see. I'll check it and see which way is better. So if it's not the best right now. I apologize. You can always send me an email with feedback. I'd appreciate that. My email is gail, G-A-I-L, dot the queen, all one word, all small letters, at gmail.com. So how about if we just go ahead and I'll read like this. And it's Later Gator by Lawrence Yep, starting with chapter 14. I'm tired, Bobby complained. Keep walking, I puffed. Between our school bags and the garbage, we had quite a load to carry up the hill. If Oscar eats all this, he'll explode. And we can't fit it all in the refrigerator, Bobby panted. What do we do? My own arms ached. Feed as much as you can to Oscar and we'll save what we can and throw away the rest. At Powell, we had to wait for the cable car to rattle by. One tourist risked getting his head bashed in to photograph us. Aren't they cute, he said, and leaned far out from the running board to take a one-handed shot. I guess we must have been downwind from them. When we got home, Cousin Roderick, Ollie, and some of the others were sitting on the steps. Can we feed your ad alligator? I had just gone through a dozen trash cans and carried garbage up a hill. Get lost. You wouldn't help us. Bobby, though, was the forgiving sort. It's okay. He was happy to be the center of attention again. Here, let me give you a hand. Ollie took one of Bobby's garbage can bags. In no time, Bobby's hands were free to get out his key to do our apartment. However, I still had my full load. I could use some help. But everyone was too busy scampering up the steps after Bobby. No one heard me. Traitors, I muttered. Grumbling, I followed the herd up the stairs on the wall. And on the wall at the top of the stairs was a big lever that opened the front door. By the time I reached it, I could already hear Bobby divvying up some of the scraps. Dropping my school bag in the hallway, I carried the rest of my burden into the kitchen. The refrigerator already looked pretty full when I opened the door. At that moment, Mother came in through the back door. In her arms was a clothes basket. I guess she'd been hanging laundry on the clotheslines up on the roof. She sniffed the air. What's that smell? I got, we got some scraps. I tried to fit a bag on a refrigerator shelf, but Mother snatched it away from me. You can't bring garbage into my house. Throw it out. It took so much work to get it, I said. Mother was much more patient than my friend's mother's, but even she had her breaking. You have taken a cake pan. You have taken one of my good bowls, but not my refrigerator. Take it out. So I took my bags of hard-won garbage down to the trash cans. Our can was full, so I checked the landlord's can. There was plenty of room. He was probably too stingy to throw out anything. I stuffed my bags into the can. As I climbed the steps, I met Bobby. His arms were loaded with his garbage bags. Mama chased everyone out. I made way for him on the stairs. Well, you know where to go tomorrow. You can rotate one restaurant a day. When I was back upstairs, I went into the bathroom to wash my hands. Inside the tub, a plump Oscar floated in his pan, his eyes poking above the water, his little legs floating like dead sticks. Sometimes, I muttered to myself, I'm so smart I outsmart myself. For once, I was grateful to have homework. It was a good distraction from recent events. Bobby usually joined me, but I guess he was observing the alligator. I was just describing the Council of Trent when the front door slammed, and I mean really slammed. I would have been surprised if it was still on its hinges. Out in the hallway, I heard Mother ask, What are you doing home so early? Who are they? Father sounded anguished. Who are who? Mother wondered. Those, those murderers, those assassins, Father stormed. I decided to stay inside the room. Who got killed? bedroom door banged open. They killed our good name. It'll spread all over Chinatown, 
father glowered at me. You, I know you're behind it all. Mother grabbed his arm. What's going on? Father took several deep breaths as he attempted to calm down. Old Bing came by. He wanted to repay me the money he borrowed. He's the one who told me. Our boys went all over Chinatown begging for food. Mother put a hand to her mouth. They had all these bags. Father groaned. We're the laughingstock of Chinatown. When Mother began to laugh, he glared at her. I don't see what's so funny. You told them to go get leftovers, Mother said. After a moment, Father sighed reluctantly. I guess I did. And at least you got old Bing to pay up, Mother pointed out. I thought I'd kiss that money goodbye, Father agreed. I'm sorry, Father, I apologized. We told them it was for our alligator. They thought it was an excuse, Father explained. They thought it really was for you, and you were just trying to save your pride. What if we borrow Uncle Curtis's camera? Then you can take a picture and show it to your friends and prove it was for Oscar. A man carries around a picture of his kids, not their pet alligator, he relented. But I guess I'll have to. I'll borrow a camera tomorrow. He glared at me. I'll show it around as Teddy's nuttiest idea. At that moment, the doorbell began ringing furiously. Bobby must have got it because the next moment I heard his voice along with that of Mr. Wong, our landlord. Mr. Wong gave one of his familiar coughs and then his voice floated through the apartment. Don't hide, blessed strength. I saw you sneak home. How many times do I have to tell you all you renters have to use the one trash can? The other is mine. Puzzled, father turned to mother. She gave another chuckle. I told the boys to throw away the garbage. There were lots of bags, father, I told him. Mr. Wong got so mad he forgot to cough. Instead, he shouted even louder from the doorway. You can't throw your trash from the store into my can. It's filled with scraps. They're scraps of meat, not fish, I tried to explain. Mr. Wong was so worked up that he didn't hear me. I've got a good mind to dump it all in your kitchen. You and your presence, father groaned. I wish I'd never heard of alligators. At this point, I thought it was better to go back to the Council of Trent. I began writing diligently while father and mother went off to apologize. Chapter 15. Father stayed home rather than going back to reopen the store. That wasn't like him at all. He kept the store open from morning to night. The only day he closed was Christmas. And when he didn't reopen the store, I knew he was really embarrassed. He was scared of meeting another club member. He just sat in the living room staring at our television. I felt so bad that I went over to him. I'm sorry, Father. I should never have gotten Oscar. I didn't mean to hurt your pride. It's not just my pride, he said. It's all of ours. Glancing at the television, I saw something was wrong with the vertical hold. The picture kept flipping past like a broken movie film. I'll go over and borrow the camera tonight. Then you can have a photograph to prove your crazy son bought an alligator. Father heaved himself up in the chair. You're not crazy. You just don't think. Yes, sir, I said, still feeling miserable. He squirmed uncomfortably in his chair. If you could apply your mind, there's no telling what you could do. It was the first time I'd ever heard praise from him. Really? He tapped his fingers on the chair arms as if pondering something. White parents flatter their kids so they get swelled heads. Chinese parents are smarter. They may not say anything to their kids, but that doesn't mean they're not proud of them. I'll try, I promised. Maybe it wouldn't hurt every now and then, though. He surprised me by putting his arms around me and squeezing, but as soon as we heard Mother's footsteps, he pushed me away. With a wink, he put a fingertip to his lips. As it turned out, I didn't have to visit Uncle Curtis to get his camera because he and Aunt Ethel came to us. We were just finishing dinner when we heard the doorbell. We were just having dinner, I said as I led them into the dining room. We were too tired to cook tonight, so we ate out, said Aunt Ethel. And we had some extra. We thought you could use this. Uncle Curtis held up a doggy bag. Father frowned when he saw it. We don't need charity, he said. Uncle Curtis pulled it back. It's not for you, Harold. Father was annoyed. My kids eat what I eat, and I eat what my kids eat. Uncle Curtis shrugged. It's for the pet. 
You bring gifts of food for an alligator? Father demanded. Uncle Curtis stared at Father. I don't want my nephews collecting garbage. The doorbell rang. When I answered it, I saw it was Uncle He and Aunt Martha had a doggy bag, too. Grandmother brought a whole shopping bag filled with a dozen cartons. I had lunch with my friends, she explained. We had so many relatives there. Seemed like another party. I'd give up, Father said and held up his hands. Curtis, I need your camera tomorrow. I'll bring it by on the way to the office, Uncle Curtis promised. Father nodded his thanks and then turned to Bobby. I've heard my learned my lesson. There were worse things than wasting food. You can have day-old fish, okay? Bobby picked up the nearest doggy bag from the pile on the table. You and Mother are the only ones who haven't fed Oscar. I'll pass, Mother said quickly. Bobby turned to Father. Would you like to give him a snack? Father sighed. Why not? Uncle Matt hunted around in the pile until he found his doggy bag. Take mine. I made sure that I had some spare ribs. Father leaned away from Uncle Matt. You picked your meal so you could feed tidbits to an alligator? Uncle Matt's face grew red. I would have eaten spare ribs anyway. Uncle Curtis wormed his doggy bag from the bottom of the pile. He could choke on a bone. Use mine, not Matt's. Uncle Matt blocked Uncle Curtis. You think you're so smart? Alligators eat whole people, so it's a little rib bone. This is a little alligator. Uncle Matt reached around Uncle Curtis and dangled his bag at Father. This is soft. Father glanced in it, and after he took it, this is chopped eggplant. Alligators aren't vegetarians. Uncle Matt laughed. The cheapskate finished all the meat. Enough, Grandmother announced and the three men fell silent. I've got barbecued pork somewhere in my bag. When we went, when we found the right carton, we all trooped down the hallway to the bathroom. Bobby was the first to enter. It's gone. Father was next in line. What do you mean gone? Bobby began hunting around the bathroom. It's not in the pan, and it's not in the tub. Everyone looked down at their feet at the same instant just in case Oscar was about to snip off a toe. We helped Bobby search the bathroom, but there was no sign of his pet. It was so thin it could hide anywhere, Aunt Martha said. She kept her eyes on the floor for some sign of Oscar. Like Aunt Martha, Uncle Curtis was afraid to take his eyes off the floor. It'll come out when it's hungry. Father was also reluctant to look up. Uh, Curtis, can alligators climb? Uncle Curtis plucked his lip. Well, I did see some reading, and there were some reports that they can rear up on their hind legs. Still keeping an eye out for Oscar, Father asked, so how high is that? Uncle Curtis placed his flat palm parallel to the floor. I'd say about that high. Father was relieved. Good. They can't climb up on the beds. Mother didn't dare raise her head either, even when she was being practical. Does anyone want a snack? I'll hit up the other doggy bags. Maybe the smell of food will draw out Oscar, Uncle Matt suggested. While poor Bobby continued his search, we walked on tiptoe back into the dining room. As Mother warmed the leftovers, the smell gradually filled the apartment. Mother kept me near her as a lookout, just in case Oscar tried to sneak attack. Once Mother had left, served the leftovers, it turned into the funniest meal I ever had. Everyone's head was bowed because they were looking for Oscar. Everyone also put their feet up on the chair legs to make it harder for Oscar to snack on them. No one seemed to have an appetite anyway. It was still too close to dinner. Besides, we were too busy waiting for Oscar to join us. As soon as it was polite, everyone left. Still want me to bring the camera? Uncle Curtis asked. Yes, he'll turn up, Father said resignedly. I hope no one flushed him into the sewer, Uncle Matt laughed. That's impossible, Uncle Curtis insisted. And it isn't appreciated, Mother nodded in the direction of the bathroom where Bobby still was. The really funny thing was that no one used the bathroom that evening, not even Grandmother, just in case Uncle Matt was right about Oscar. Chapter 16 As I helped Mother squeeze the leftovers into our already crammed refrigerator, she looked at me. Why did you help Bobby anyway? As I handed her a carton, I tried to pass it off with a shrug. He would have messed up, and that would have ruined our reputation, too. 
To my surprise, she gave me a quick peck on the cheek. You're so much like your father. You can't admit to doing a good deed, can you? I rubbed the wet spot on my cheek. I am? Mother laughed. He was a regular little devil when he was your age. What kind of things did he do? I wondered. Mother, though, brought a finger to her lips as we heard father come into the kitchen. Honey, he asked, are there any spare ribs left? Mother winked. We had our own secret now. Yes, but let me heat them up. You'll get sick if you eat them cold. She started to dig around in the refrigerator again. When I'd finished helping Mother, I went into the bathroom. Bobby was still there searching for Oscar. He was on his hands and knees, peering at the cracks in the tiled wall. It's time to go to bed, I pulled at his shoulder. Come on, get up. Instead of rising, he looked over his shoulder at me. I can't go to bed until I find Oscar. I could see tear tracks on his cheeks, and that was unusual. Even when I was tormenting Bobby at my worst, he never cried. Oscar will turn up. He just stayed where he was. You're not mad, are you? Surprised, I sat down on the edge of the bathtub. Why would you think that? You gave him to me. Oscar was special and I lost him, Bobby said. I could feel my cheeks begin to burn a bright red. He wasn't that special. Bobby pulled himself up beside me. Everyone made such a fuss at the party. It was better than any toy. I got some tissues from the box on top of the toilet tank. I have a confession, I said. I was playing a trick on you when I gave you Oscar. He took the tissue and wiped his eyes. I wondered about that. I felt like squirming. It was just a little prank, though, like grabbing a chair out from under you. How would you like it if I did that to you? He asked. I thought back to his pet's christening. Isn't that why you wanted to name it Teddy at first? Kind of, he admitted reluctantly. But I didn't care. I told you I liked alligators. It was like having my own nature show. The kid had more character than I thought. Okay, his older brother was too dense to realize Bobby had been playing his own prank. I began to feel the first glimmerings of respect for my little brother. The joke's on me anyway. I'd never seen Bobby so worried before. He used the tissue until it was a damp lump. The joke's on poor Oscar. I bet he's hiding somewhere scared and lost. I'd done stuff to Bobby as long as I'd known him. That's what older brothers are for. If it was up to our folks, they'd have spoiled him shamelessly. Up until now, though, Bobby had always been like a helium balloon. Even when I tried to yank down on the string, I could feel his spirits tugging to go back up. They used to drive me crazy. Just once, I wish he could have acted normal like everyone else. But even at my worst, I'd never wanted him to feel this low. I pulled more tissues from the box and handed them to him. Nothing scares an animal with that many teeth. He blew his nose. But he trusted me to protect him. The only thing Oscar wanted was three square meals a day. However, you don't kick someone when they're down, so I kept my opinion to myself. That was a first for Gator Boy. Somehow, though, that didn't seem enough. While Bobby snuffled miserably, I sat uncomfortably, wondering what to do. Finally, I figured that alligators and gator boys must be nice to their own. So I put my arm around Bobby. I did it kind of clumsily. It wasn't as if I'd had a lot of practice. And where could he get lost in our apartment? He blew his nose even louder. He could squeeze through some hole in the wall. I imagined Oscar poking his head out of a mouse hole. We won't have to worry about mice anymore then. He could get stuck though, Bobby said. I tried to reassure him. We'd hear him wriggling around if he was. Then I'd borrow father's hammer and we'd knock a hole in that old wall and get him out. You would? Bobby rubbed the back of his hand across his eyes. I looked down at him. Right now he didn't seem so obnoxious. Scout's honor, I said. To my own surprise, I meant it. Now let's go to bed. He got up when I pulled at him. Things still weren't the same the next day. When I got up in the morning, I picked up my slippers and started to put them on. Something, though, made me stop. I shook out first one and then the other. Bobby had been watching. Oscar's too big to fit in them, he said. I had left my corduroy pants on the floor. When I picked them up, I shook out them out cautiously and laid them on the bed. I saw Bobby do the same. At least for a while, we wouldn't be dumping our clothes on the floor. 
Mother was in the kitchen walking around on tiptoe. She looked ready to bolt at the first sign of something green. Her mind was so taken up with Oscar that everything came out burned or undercooked. Father ate breakfast with his feet propped up on the big red hundred pound rice can. He wanted them out of reach of alligators too. I had time to think about things overnight. The situation called for something more than a photograph. I'm sorry about our good name, I apologized again. Would it help if I went around to your friends? Father picked up a forkful of runny scramble eggs under, under, over undercooked rice. It's okay, I'll handle them. I placed my chair away from the table so I could see anything sneaking up on me. This meant I had to lean far forward to eat. But you can photograph Oscar now, but you can't photograph Oscar now. Father grinned at mother. I guess he'd been thinking about things last night too. We've got an anniversary coming up. Maybe we'll hold a big banquet. We'll show everyone we're not poor. That would be nice, Mother said uncertainly as she sat down with us. But can we afford it? Father shrugged. Big shot. Curtis is always bragging about his connections to that fancy restaurant. We'll see if he really can get us a good meal, a good deal. After school was over, I looked for Bobby, but I didn't see him. Then I saw one of his classmates at the bus stop. I couldn't remember the little twerp's name. Have you seen Bobby? I asked. He pointed up the steep Clay Street Hill. He already left. I think he was going home. I glanced up the hill, but there wasn't any sign of him. But we have Chinese school next. He's cutting it, I guess, the classmate said. That wasn't like Bobby either. I was the one who was always trying to get out of Chinese school. Bobby took it so he could understand grandmother better. The funny thing was that they taught us a different dialect in school, so grandmother didn't always understand him anyway. I headed up the hill. When I got home, I found Bobby in the hallway. He had his ear against the wall while he wrapped it with his knuckle. Oscar, he called. Oscar. He was so upset that I did not try to scold him. He's not hiding in the walls, Bobby. He's probably curled up behind some chair. Will you help me search? He begged. He looked so sad that I could not argue. Sure, I said. We'd still had no luck when mother came home from work. She understood when I explained why we cut class and she promised to write a note to the Chinese school principal. In the meantime, she got a plate from the kitchen and put some leftovers on it. Oscar's got to be hungry by now, she said. For the next few days, we set out little plates of Oscar tidbits to tempt him. Every night, father counted the guppies in his aquarium but none were missing. Maybe Oscar was eating mice after all. Chapter 17. It's funny how you learn to adjust. It got to be second nature to inspect everything before I sat down. When I walked in our apartment, I kept one eye out for an alligator tail, or worse, the sharper end. As Oscar stayed lost day after day, I began to think he was D-E-A-D. -E From the way that he'd begun to relax, that they had begun to relax, I knew father and mother thought the same thing. Even so, none of us said anything in front of Bobby. It was crazy, I know. Maybe in the old days before Oscar, I would have, but as dopey as Bobby could be, I wanted to protect him. Bobby never gave up hope. His faith acted like a kind of shield. Facts just bounced off his faith. Then one late one afternoon, we were walking up the hill after Chinese school when we saw our landlord, Mr. Wong, crossing Powell. He must have been shopping in Chinatown because he had a bag in either hand. At the top of one bag, I could see some sort of new herbal cure. As always, he wore his blue suit with the white pinstripes. Every now and then, he gave one of his dry little coughs. In the bed beneath the cable car tracks, the cable hummed and clattered as it moved. I stopped to look both ways, but a desperate bobby shot across the street. Fortunately, there wasn't any traffic, and I darted after him. Bobby, though, had already caught up with our landlord. Mr. Wong, he called. Wait, Mr. Wong, have you heard something in the walls? Usually our landlord did his best to avoid us. I think he was afraid we would ask him to fix one of the many problems with our apartment. If he couldn't hide from us, he tried to ignore us. He kept his eyes stonily on the sidewalk while Bobby kept pace beside him. Mr. Wong, have you heard something slither in the walls? Even Mr. Wong could not neglect that. He stopped dead in his tracks, his shopping bags banging against his legs. Slither? 
Like an alligator, Bobby asked hopefully. Mr. Wong hawked and spat on the sidewalk. Haven't you found that thing yet? No, Bobby puffed. And I thought he might have got into the walls and gone downstairs. Alarmed, Mr. Wong cried. Into my apartment? His voice rising an octave. I dashed up the last few yards. Don't worry, Mr. Wong, I panted. Bobby's just been over anxious. Sure, Mr. Wong laughed nervously. Bobby defended himself. Well, what other possibility is there? We've looked all over the apartment. He must be eating something. In our apartment, I emphasized the hour. Alligators don't get into the walls. Sure, Mr. Wong said, and he didn't laugh this time. In fact, I think we had scared his cough right out of him. He took a step forward and then hesitated. Better to be safe than sorry, Mr. Wong muttered. Turning on his heel, he checked that the street was clear of cars and plunged across. On the other side of the street was an exterminator. A big sign over his store said, The Reincarnator. Send that vermin on to another life. I knew him from Father's Club. It was hard to tell when he was serious and when he was joking. Now see what you've done, I accused Bobby. Making sure that there were no cars in the street, I hurried after Mr. Wong. I could hear Bobby at my heels. The reincarnator was a small, thin man with a pale, narrow face. He always wore gray overalls and a cap. He was just putting down the phone and reached the countertop to drag a pad in front of him. What's the problem, my friend? Mr. Wong smiled apologetically. I don't really know how to begin. The reincarnator finished writing out a bill. It's no shame to have mice and cockroaches. Vermin like to sneak into the house of decent people. If you have a problem, sing out loud. Embarrassed, Mr. Wong moved forward. How would I check my walls for alligators? The reincarnator calmly laid his pen down. Folding up the bill, he stuffed it into an envelope. Well, you gotta set up an alligator trap. Mr. Wong drew his eyebrows together while he puzzled that out. And how would I do that? The reincarnator licked the envelope and sealed it by pounding his fist. You have to catch a live mouse. Then you take a string and tie it to the leg of a chair and hide. You've got alligators in the wall. They'll smell the mouse and come out. Really? Mr. Wong asked doubtfully. Works every time, friend. The reincarnator tore a stamp from a roll. Mr. Wong studied the reincarnator's face, but he seemed perfectly serious. And, and what do I do then? The reincarnator licked the stamp and thumped it on the envelope with a fist. How big are these alligators? Mr. Wong turned as we joined him at the counter. What's the size? Bobby held up his hands in the approximate length of Oscar. The reincarnator dumped the envelope on top of a pile of other envelopes in a wire basket. Have you got a twenty-two? No, Bobby said in horror. You can't shoot it. He would have tugged at Mr. Wong, but I wrapped my arms around my brother's shoulders. You wouldn't happen to have a spare mouse in some trap. Even now, he was trying to save a buck. Um, with a smirk, the reincarnator picked up his pen and clicked it shut. Then with a flick of his wrist, he slid it on into his plastic shirt pocket protector like some swordsman sheathing his weapon. Fat man put you up to this, didn't he? You tell this practical joke didn't work. Mr. Wong tried to shrug sheepishly, but his shopping bags weighed his shoulders down. This is no prank. We really have alligators. Just ask them. I had to get Bobby out of there before anyone said the D word. It's only an alligator. It's only one, I said. It's just hiding somewhere in our apartment. The reincarnator nodded slowly. You are that crazy boy of blessed strengths. So there really is an alligator. He rested his elbows on the countertop. What did you do? Flush it into the sewer? I didn't do anything, I said indignantly. The reincarnator leaned against the counter and studied the ceiling as if there were instructions printed there. I'm making an educated guess, but it comes free. If you haven't seen your alligator by now, he's dead. I took in my breath sharply. He'd said the dreaded word. It was awful to see Bobby's face. He looked as if the reincarnator had just cut off one of his ears. He's not dead, Bobby insisted. The reincarnator looked down. Have your way, boy. Your walls are full of alligators. Good luck getting rid of them. He's not dead, Bobby shouted and ran from the store. Okay, I, we might finish this tomorrow. We'll see. So I'll see you tomorrow at 1.30 for Family Library Time.